If you've ever grown basil outside or in a pot or indoor, you might have always wondered, how do you actually harvest it properly? And today I'm gonna to show you one trick for harvesting basil to ensure you harvest the most that you ever have. There's really one important thing I learned last year when I started growing basil. It really took my basil growing game to a whole nother level and finally made me achieve success. But first, let me just take you through a little stroll of the garden, give you a little update. There have been some unfortunate developments, sadly. So over here we had that patio tomato, that determinant early producing tomato here. And it's the tomato fruit started to ripe. And what I noticed is that they were very mealy and there was no flavor and there was no texture. And so I decided to pull it out and I dug deep down and realized it was just so, I mean, it's still moist. There's water dripping out of that. So it was so waterlogged. And so I realized that tomato just got flat out overwatered. That's a self-watering container. It's in the shade and it just kind of went bad. So I'm gonna start over there and I'm gonna turn it into a lettuce container. Arugula's doing well, kale's doing well. The ruby red is doing okay. I'm just keeping it kind of baby ruby red because when it gets big, it becomes hard to support. Something just straight up pulled out and ate my entire strawberry plant and every strawberry that develops gets eaten before I can pick it or it ripens. So that's a problem. I'm keeping track of it. I'm trying to figure out solutions for that. But my romaine just completely got wiped out by leaf miners. I wish I documented it for you, but it all happened so fast and I was pretty upset about it. I was trying to fix it in the moment, but it didn't work. So instead, I have these other starters, baby seedlings, getting ready, and I kind of just kind of randomly planted seeds, and I thought I could just kind of remember which one is what, but that's not the case. So mistake number one, always label any seedlings that you start, but I'm gonna start getting pretty intensive in my seedlings and just gonna try and start to grow more intensely in here. I'm gonna redesign this thing, you know, this is okay because I wasn't happy with how I did it to start, but now I can sort of redesign it and maximize its efficiency. Maybe put a trellis up here, grow some peas, which take nitrogen from the air and add it to the soil while lettuces kind of suck nitrogen up. So, you know, I'm not gonna be upset about it. I'm gonna use it as an opportunity to learn. And I also had some fingerling potatoes that were spouting eyes, so, I buried them here, trying growing some potatoes. I have some beautiful zucchini growing here with zucchini flowers. I have a great pasta recipe planned for this guy, as well as some zucchini fritti, some fried zucchini with the flowers. So I'm excited about my zucchini plant. I'd never grown zucchini before, so I'm excited to learn about growing this guy. Banana peppers are coming in nice. Some cherry tomatoes ripening up. I actually snuck one this morning. They're sweet, they're delicious. They don't taste mealy like the other ones, so I'm really psyched. We have our propagated tomato plant that's kind of established itself in the soil, but I have these flea beetles, though, that keep eating all of the lettuce leaves. See that little black thing right there? That's a little flying flea beetle. Just flew right off. My heirloom brandy wine is Looking good, I decided to kind of let it grow out a little bit. I'm pinching all the suckers as they come um, and just deciding if I want to leave any. But, but I finally got a flower cluster right there, so I'm happy about that and eventually I'm gonna start to stake this guy up like I showed you in the last video. We got some nice shishito pepper growing right here. This one's coming in nicely. A Bunch of little guys coming in behind it. Our oregano and our mint are doing pretty good. So is our thyme and our rosemary. It's all coming in. Hot cherry peppers are coming in. One that's ripening right here. And then of course we've got the subject of today's video. Let me just get this out of here. This one trick has 
allowed me to make sure that I never am short of basil. And if the weather permitted, I could probably grow this basil forever. And the reason why sometimes you can't grow basil forever is it gets to a point where it flowers. Flowering is good on one point because that's its way of reproducing. We get seeds when something flowers. So you can harvest the seeds of a basil that you like by letting it flower, but the problem is it gets bitter. All of the sweet, delicious, beautiful flavor of basil goes bitter and it's no good. In fact, you can see this one is starting to flower right now. And why is this one so much taller than these guys? Is because I applied that one trick to these guys and I didn't do it to this. I allowed this to grow naturally and as you can see it's leggy, it's not very bushy, there's not a lot of leaves on it and it's already going straight to a flower. Whereas these are, are bushy and robust and healthy and they keep growing more leaves. And that's because of this one trick. And that trick is just pruning. So as you can see, you have these two basil leaves and then these two offshoots of basil that are growing their own heads as well. And then it keeps going up and repeating itself until it flowers. So if you just cut anywhere on the plant where you can see these two offshoots growing, then you just basically duplicated the amount it's gonna produce. So if you keep doing that to all of them, now that's how you harvest basil. Every time you need basil, you harvest it like that, and then it'll just keep coming back. You just make sure that you don't let it flower. So then I'm just gonna go through and look for kinda scummy leaves or any discoloration, anything that look, looks diseased at all. And as you can see, I've been cutting this thing. So it's all new growth coming from harvesting these as I go, and as you harvest, you get more. It's an amazing thing. So prune that basil. Harvest it all the time. It's gonna keep bringing you more. Well, that's it for today in the garden. I hope you learned something about basil. I know this trick really helped me understand basil, growing basil. Always been effective for me and I've always enjoyed tons of beautiful, sweet, delicious basil. So that's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. Bastard. I don't forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Where is like harmless? You never did use them.